always get stuck in a verse. And I've been stuck in this one verse for about three weeks. Now, Sunday I did a little dig deeper, but, but I'm going to carry on with the verses, Ephesians 5.15. It says, in Ephesians 5.15, it says, Looking carefully, then, how you walk, I purposely and worldly and accurately, not as the unwise and witless, but as wise, sensible, intelligent people. So tonight, what I want to talk about, last week we talked about walking, living a life of honor. Tonight, I want to talk about walking with a purpose. Walking with a purpose. Now, when we look at the word purpose, it actually means intention or design. Mm. And as we know, God had a definite purpose or design when he created heaven and earth and when he created man. Mm. And I want to look at first some of God's intention for us. And it starts at in Genesis 1.28. It says, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. Replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and of the fowl of the air and over everything that moveth upon the earth. So we see that when God made man, he told him, first of all, be fruitful. Mm. Be fruitful and multiply. Now, when we look at the word fruitful, we, we actually, what he is saying is that, that you walk in the fruit of the Spirit. In Galatians 5.22 it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. It gets there, says there is no law. So we see... That's one of the first things he told man to do is to be fruitful. Now, a lot of people think, well, the fruitfulness is going out and witnessing and bringing people to Christ. Yes, it is. But what was the first thing he told them to do is to be fruitful and in spirit. In the spirit that we, you know, that we show love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, faith, Meekness, temperance. So we need, that is the first thing he said to do. Then he said to be multiplied. That you multiply. That means that you just add to your family. Actually, it's saying add to his family. That he wanted, he created man to have a relationship with him. He created man to have a family. So he is telling us to multiply. And, you know, we can take it in two ways. Multiply as, as we have children. But we can also say <laughs> multiply in bringing more people into the family of God. That more of the spiritual children. So we see this, that, that there's some of the things he did. And he said to replenish the earth. And subdue it and have dominion on the fish of the air. Now, when we talked about have dominion... What he was actually saying is that we take the dominion back from Satan. Mm. Yeah. The domination yeah. that Satan has on this earth that he is telling us is it's us that he has given us dominion in the first place mm. over this earth. But because of Adam's sin, that the dominion was stolen. But because of Jesus being the firstborn, that he came and did a sacrifice, that we now can take dominion back over Satan's no. wild, that no. we can take authority. We can no. take the authority back. So what Satan has stole, we, through the blood and the word and the name of Jesus, that we can take dominion back over all the wiles and schemes of the devil. Amen. So we see that, that he's telling us that. Well, in Deuteronomy 10.2, 
And he says, and now Israel. Now, when he's talking to Israel, people usually think, well, this is the Jewish people. But we have to understand it actually deals with us too because we are the seed of Abraham. When we believe in Jesus Christ, as we become grafted in, in the, into the Jewish family. And here it says, And now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to love him, to serve him, thy God, with all thy heart and all thy soul. So when we look at it, it's very simple when we think about what is our purpose in life is to have a relationship with God through the fruits of the Spirit, but it's also telling us that we walk in His ways and His commandments, Mom. that we walk in His precepts, we walk in all the things that the Scripture tells us, that He tells us to walk in His ways. And, and that's... And we said, well, I don't know how to walk in his ways because his, his ways are higher than ours. And his thoughts are higher than us. And that's the reason why we pray to have that relationship. And that's the reason why we have the Holy Spirit that teaches yes, us his ways. That's why we have the scripture to teach us the ways that we walk. That's the reason why the Holy Spirit comes that leads the righteous man in his order, his steps. See, these are the things that we have to understand. But then it says to love Him. To love Him. We have to learn to love God. And a lot of times we get so wrapped up in loving things, and we even forget to even love people. A lot of times people love things more than they do people. They get more satisfaction of buying things or, or, or accumulating things. But it's just like it says that all these things is just going to turn to rust and stubble. Stubble. Yeah. And they'll eventually be burned up. And so we mm -hmm. just have to think. So people say, well, I love things. I love this. I love, you know. But that's not where the love is. You should like things. Yeah. You don't need to be in love with things. Yeah. So it's just like I, I relate a story. A guy decided that he wanted to by his children, a swing set. And how many of you have ever put a swing set together? Ooh. You know, you put a swing set together and you, you, you take this time and you have all these boats and stuff, but you have to, yes. you know, put it together. But if you don't go out there every couple of months, those boats kind of get loosened and they kind of fall and so one of your kids might get here. So again, you become a slave to that swing set. So you're always tightening those boats. Yeah. It's just like some people buy a boat. And some people say, the best thing I ever did was buy a boat. The next best thing is when I sold the boat. Because there was so much maintenance on it. But see, people get in this thing, I just need to love things. But God created to, first of all, to love him. Glory. Mm -hmm. And then he created us to love others. Amen. And if you want to know our purpose in life is to show love to each other. Amen. Our purpose is to love God with all of our heart, all of our mind, our soul, and love our neighbor as ourselves. Who's your neighbor? Mm -hmm. It's whoever you run into. Amen. Amen. And anybody that you rate. Amen. Walk in. Amen. Now, Micah 6 8. Mm. Micah 6 8 says, He has told you, O man, what is good. What does the Lord require of you except to be just and to love and to diligently practice kindness and compassion? And to walk humbly with your God, setting aside any overblown sense of importance or self-righteousness. Yeah. So when, you, when you're looking, the walking with a purpose is first of all that we, we walk and we become fruitful and we walk in the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. Next thing is to multiply 
to bring other people to Christ, then we also understand that we need to have, we walk in all our ways according to God's principles and precepts. Mm. And so we need to go through this and we understand the question is, what is good? Yeah. God is good. And if you look at the word good, take out one O out of it, and we see God. So in the middle of good is the word God. If you want to know what is good, you just look at God and look at his ways and his precepts and his teachings. So we have to understand that it says what does the Lord require of you? What does he require of you? The main thing is to love him. Yes. To love him. And diligently, diligently love other people. Oh, Lord. Diligently. Not just when you feel like doing it. He's saying that we need to have unconditional love for oh, one another. Yes. But we also should have unconditional love for God. Too many people, they don't understand. They say, well, what has God done for me? Oh. Well, he gave you breath of life in the first place. Oh. And he gave you the opportunity oh. to be one of his Thank children. Yeah. So we have to understand this. What is the conditions of love? Mm. It's unconditional. God loves us unconditionally. Yes. So we need to learn to love Him unconditionally. Amen. Not what we can get out of Him, but just because He is God and we stand in Ooh. awe and reverence of Him. Amen. So we go on and it says that told us to love, that not only to love, but to love diligently. You know, it's almost like if you're diligently doing something, it is with a purpose. Uh -huh. it, you yes. just yes. purposely yes. loving people. I know I said one time that, um, you know, I, I was at this church. I was passionate in this church. And uh, I probably should have stayed there longer than I did. Because I had another church called me that was a bigger church. And it seemed like... Everything was solid gold and everything. It was just so neat. The sanctuary was about the size of this building, you know, and stuff. And uh, so I went to that church. And they didn't like it when I started reaching the community and I reached out to the projects. And they didn't like that because, you know, the changed, church was changing. They didn't like that. So if I probably would stay where I was, I'd probably really be growing because I went back to that community that uh, of that church that I was pastoring there on the coast of Texas a few years ago. And 20 years later, or, what, or how many years later, the community was five times bigger than it was before. And so we just see that it just grew and grew and grew. So that was one of my things that not all things in glitter is gold. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so we have to understand that you have to listen to the Lord. You have to listen to the Holy Spirit and just don't look at other things. But diligently practice kindness. But when we see kindness, that is compassion. Yeah. That You know, one of the things that's been speaking to me lately is that when we come to church, we need to practice kindness, but we actually need to walk in here with compassion. That we have compassion for every soul that walks into Amen. this church. That we look at them differently. I, everybody has bumps and bruises and scars and everything. And we don't need to look at their bumps and, and bruises and scars. We need to look at them with compassion. And, you know, we can be passionate about wanting to grow a church. But there's a difference when you say, I have compassion for the church. 
or for the people. Because when compassion comes, the word is actually that you wrap yourself around with the passion. Or you wrap yourself around with the love. And see, that's what we need to do. Instead of looking at the people and all their bumps and bruises and scars, start looking at them as a person that we're going to love. Yes, amen. And that, that sometimes we might be the only ones that might love those people. Yes. We're, we're the only one that shows them compassion. So if you want to know your purpose, that you walk with God, it's you walk compassionately. Yes. And all that you do. Amen. All you do. Amen. And then it says to walk humbly with your God. Yes. Now, people get this humble stuff or humble stuff. Depends where you if you're a Texan or not. You'll say humble because there's a town in Texas called Humble, Texas. But, but actually people it's humble. But anyway, I just going to say anyway, is that it's not being humble, it's that you're so downtrodden and you just, oh, I'm, I'm just such a filthy rags and I'm a sinner by grace. You know, you know, that's actually talking defeat. You hear people say that all the time. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Well, okay. But aren't you redeemed by the blood of the Lamb? Aren't you raised above Boy. that sin? Boy. Hasn't your sin been forgiven? Mm, you know, there's a difference. Boy. There's a total difference. But some people mm. use that as a badge on them. Yeah. yeah. I'm just a sinner and I'm just filthy rags. No, you're not. If you have born again Christians, you are washed and regenerated by the blood of God, yeah. that you are cleansed by the blood, that yeah. He take that crimson yeah. stain off of you. Mm. Washed white as the snow, made yes. perfect and yes. in His sight, and yes. sanctified and soon to be glorified and soon coming. Hallelujah. Yes, amen. amen. So we amen. just have to understand that we are washed as white as yes. snow. That we are humbly, but what it is. The last part of this verse it says that we have to see walking with a purpose. We're set aside anything overblown says self importance or self righteousness. You are all important in God's eyes, you are all His children. You are all joint heirs with Jesus. You are redeemed. You are his elect. You know, it's all the free gifts that you are saved by grace. Those free spirit. The free gifts that he gives us. So when we look at it, to walk with a purpose is very easy to see. Very easy to see that we walk with a purpose. And yes. God's intention for us yes. is to walk in His Spirit, to worship in His yes. Spirit, I mean. to worship in truth. Yes. We are called to walk in the fruit of the Spirit, to show other people of what God's free gifts of that Spirit that He's given us, that we can show the goodness and that Amen. we can show the love, the Amen. joy and peace to other people. Yes. Even for bearing their faults. Mm. Uh, one of the things the Lord has just woke me up years ago, it must be 25 years ago, mm. he woke me up and said, Skip. And I, I looked around and I said, Who is that? You know, no, no, I didn't say that. But, it, you know, I did I didn't question that it wasn't God. Yeah. I could have been asleep. I could have been anything. But when he said to me, you need to be like me. That you look past their sins and see their potential. Oh, boy. And that's what we need to do. That we're going to, well, there are going to be people boy. that are coming in here. Amen. The rich, the poor. 
the ungodly. But we need to show them that compassionate love yeah. and look past their sins and see their potential to be a child of God. Amen. So we have to understand Amen. and get out of ourselves. Yes. I wrote on Facebook this week that I heard something on the radio and I kind of paraphrased part of it. Mm. Is that when you have a need, plant a seed in somebody else's life yes. or their need. Yes. So when we start looking at just don't be so, so self-centered, oh, I need this, I need this. Well, God knows that you need that. Yes. He already knows your need. All he, right. It's, right. it's like this. It's not, he doesn't work on your need. He works on your faith. And when we step out in faith and help somebody else that is in need, yes. we find out that our need is met. Right. Because we planted that seed. Yes. So you want to know a purpose? Purpose is to walk in the Spirit. To be fruitful. To multiply. To love compassionately. Yes, amen. And reach out to others and get out of yourself. Oh, glory, amen. Yes. In amen. the name of Jesus. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you right now. And I thank you that you had intentions for us. To be your family. That you had a design for each one of us. To become your family. Mm. But also Father. You have given us the divine purpose. To walk in the spirit. To show the fruit of the spirit. That Christ in us. Is the hope of glory. Mm. And Father we speak right now. That you will compassionately use us. Thank you, Father. Because you compassionately sent your son yes. for us. Yes. But compassionately mm -hmm. let us show love to others. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. God.